Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss aortic ganglion. What do you mean by the term ganglion? Ganglion is collection of cell bodies of neurons outside CNS. That is central nervous system. Now see this is a neuron. Neuron has the upper portion called as cell body. This is called as axon and these are terminal ends. This is the nucleus and these are dendrites. This portion collection of the cell bodies of neurons outside the central nervous system is called as ganglion. Now what if these cell bodies are present within the central nervous system that is called as nucleus. Central nervous system implies to the brain, the brain stem as well as the spinal cord. The collection of the cell bodies of neurons within the central nervous system is called as nucleus. When it is present in the peripheral nervous system that is outside the central nervous system that is called as ganglion. So our today's topic is aortic ganglion. Aortic ganglion. First of all, I would like to explain you this diagram. This is actually the sagittal section of the head and neck showing the bones and the face and the respective structures including the brain stem. Now see this is the anterior cranial fossa. Sara, this is anterior cranial fossa. This is middle cranial fossa and this is posterior cranial fossa. This level implies the foramen magnum and this is brain stem which lies in the posterior cranial fossa. This is midbrain, pons, medulla and posteriorly we have the cerebellum. This is the spinal cord. What are these structures? You know that from thoracic level to the L2 level, we have the sympathetic chain consisting from T1 to L2 segments. And above that, in the cervical region, we have the cervical ganglions, three cervical ganglions superior cervical, middle cervical and in inferior cervical. This is again a part of sympathetic chain only. This structure is middle ear and this is the orbit containing the eyeball and the related structures. This is maxilla, this is upper teeth, this is tongue, this is your beautiful nose and this is the beautiful chin. This is the pterygoid plate, probably the lateral pterygoid plate. And what is this? This is a connection or gateway between the middle cranial fossa and the orbit. This is the superior orbital fissure through which passes the many nerves and vessels which supplies the uh, eyeball and the related structures. What is this? This is foramen rotundum. This is foramen ovale. This is round. This is rotundum. This is oval in shape. This is foramen ovale. What lies behind it? This is foramen spinosum. And what is this? This is carotid canal. And this structure shows the jugular foramen. This is the middle ear. It is a part of petrous temporal bone only. Now the aortic ganglion. Aortic ganglion is located just below the foramen ovale. It is located below the foramen ovale like this. Now we all know that there is a large ganglion. This is called as trigeminal ganglion, which has a central process connecting to the pons and three nerves emerging out of this ganglion. One goes to the orbit ophthalmic division, second goes towards the maxilla, the maxillary division and third goes to the foramen ovale. This is the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. 
the aortic ganglion topographically it is present topographically means location wise it is present just below the foramen ovale near the mandibular nerve topographically means location wise it is a part of the mandibular nerve but functionally it is a part of some other nerve i'll tell you later on now the mandibular nerve as it exits out of the foramen ovale it comes in this region this is called infratemporal fossa it divides into two divisions like this this is the anterior division and this is the posterior division posterior division gives off a nerve which is called as auriculotemporal nerve which is in the form of a loop this nerve is called auriculotemporal because it supplies the auricle the temporal region as well as it supplies the parotid gland this structure i have drawn is the parotid gland this is a duct of the parotid gland so mandibular nerve as it emerges out of the foramen ovale it divides into two branches this is the trunk of the mandibular nerve it divides into two divisions the anterior division and the posterior divisions both give many other branches but we are concerned with the auriculotemporal nerve only auriculotemporal nerve is attached to the posterior division by the two roots and this nerve supplies the parotid gland now as we all know this is midbrain this is pons and this is medulla oblongata this is the level of foramen magnum and below the foramen magnum this is the spinal cord which consists of gray matter inside and the white matter outside now the cranial nerves are emerging out of the brain stem third and fourth cranial nerve emerge out of the midbrain fifth this is trigeminal emerges out of the pons sixth seventh eighth from the pontomedullary junction ninth tenth eleventh and twelfth from the medulla oblongata now i'll draw a nerve this is called as ninth cranial nerve this is called as ninth cranial nerve that is the glossopharyngeal this is ninth cranial nerve it emerges out of the medulla and enters the jugular foramen then it leaves the jugular foramen supplies the tongue as well as the pharynx and the other structures now it gives off a branch this is called as tympanic branch this is called as tympanic branch it enters a very small canaliculus here between the carotid canal and the jugular foramen there is a thin plate of bone which has a very small hole it is called as tympanic canaliculus the tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve enters this tympanic canaliculus and enters the middle ear where it participates in a plexus called as tympanic plexus this is called as tympanic plexus from where a nerve emerges out this is called as lesser petrosal nerve because it is a, it is in relationship with the petrous temporal bone it is called lesser petrosal nerve this lesser petrosal nerve moves forwards along with the mandibular nerve in the foramen ovale finally enters the foramen ovale then enters the infratemporal fossa enters the aortic ganglion where this nerve relays now this nerve ends here the post ganglionic fibers they come via the mandibular nerve via the auriculotemporal nerve and reaches the parotid gland and supplies it this is the parasympathetic supply to the parotid gland and the fibers they relay in the aortic ganglion as we all know that aortic ganglion is a peripheral parasympathetic ganglion why it is called as parasympathetic ganglion because the parasympathetic fibers they relay in this ganglion that is why it is called as parasympathetic ganglion it is peripherally placed it is named as peripheral parasympathetic ganglion the fibers of the lesser petrosal nerve they relay here these all are preganglionic fibers because they are before the ganglion and these are postganglionic fibers they are after the ganglion this whole nerve carries the secretomotor information or the parasympathetic information to the parotid gland helps in secretion of saliva from the parotid gland this was one root 
आर डब्लू टी ऑफ ऑटिक गैंगलियन पैरासिंपेथेटिक फाइबर्स दे रिले हेयर नाउ वी हैव a very important artery i'll draw this artery here towards the maxilla this is called as maxillary artery this is called as maxillary artery this maxillary artery gives off a branch this is called as middle meningeal artery it runs in between this loop of the auriculo temporal nerve then it reaches the foramen spinosum it is called middle meningeal artery because it will enter into the middle cranial fossa and supplies the menin meninges there this is called as middle meningeal artery this is maxillary artery and this one is the middle meningeal artery which passes between the two loops of the auriculo temporal nerve now what happens t1 to l2 you people know that that is sympathetic chain the fibers from the lateral portion lateral gray horn it enters the t1 these are preganglionic fibers from the t1 the fibers they jump above remember these are sympathetic fibers from the t1 the sympathetic fibers they jump above they are post ganglionic fibers now these were pre ganglionic fibers they are post ganglionic fibers they jump till the level of the superior cervical ganglion then the fibers they emerge out they come out they form a plexus around this artery this is the maxillary artery they form a plexus around the maxillary artery and also around the middle meningeal artery they will go along with the middle meningeal artery they will go along with the middle meningeal artery some fibers leave from here and enter the otic ganglion without relay in the ganglion and these fibers follow the same course and enters the parotid gland remember these are sympathetic fibers and these are post ganglionic fibers these fibers are vaso motor to the parotid gland they also pass through the ganglion but they do not relay in this ganglion these are post ganglionic sympathetic fibers this forms the second root of the otic ganglion the third root is formed by the auriculo temporal nerve itself it carries the sensory informations from the parotid gland this was all about the otic ganglion